Hello everyone, welcome to Watch Complications. I'm Brian. This video is going to give you a look at a new custom watch I just finished for my Making Custom Dials and Making Custom Watches series. So I'll add the video to both of those playlists, but I wanted to give a brief look and talk just a little bit about the process I went through to build this watch. So I want to give you an up close look at that. I think it's a wonderful looking watch for a client and I'll talk about the detail when I show it. Quick wrist check for today, I'm wearing my Hampton Nanook, which you can look in uh, the channel or on the blog, watchcomplications.com, and, and see the review of this watch. What I like about it is that it's got uh, the full day in the day-date complication, which is nice at 12 o'clock, and I like the color combination. I still find the, the clasp a little bit uh, bulky, and I'm watching closely the pens, the screws, uh, holding the links together, and they, they seem to be working themselves loose a little bit. So keeping an eye on that, but I love that the bracelet is all brushed and I love the, the full day date. Just a good watch, good design, um, but take a look at that if you haven't seen it yet. Also, before I show you what I'm calling dual time, uh, which is a play on words, I have four boxes here. One of them is a Timex, you can probably see, but I'm super excited because one of my most popular videos, which is low cost watches, in which I went through three low cost watches that I got on Amazon, I'm doing another version of that, but with chronographs. So I have a low cost watches chronographs edition coming, which I'm gonna compare and contrast four different low cost watches. I got these for about a hundred bucks for all four of them together, a little over. So low cost stuff, gonna be a good video. Looking forward to getting that out to you soon. Here's a first little look at the dual time watch I just finished. And you're gonna get a lot more up close look at it here in a little bit. I've given peeks at this before, at like the beginning of some other videos on Instagram, I've taken a few pictures and posted them, but this has been a project that I've been working on probably all the way since like January. It's been about nine months uh, and not, you know, constant work. It is in between other projects and other things and the channel and so on and so forth. But I've been working on this for a while for a client. I'm glad it's finally done. It's turned out amazing. At least that's my opinion, of course, to my watch. But this is really about giving you just a, a brief up close look at this watch in its finished form. There'll be a lot more pictures and information, textual information about the process that I went through to build it on the website. So check out Watch Complications and keep an eye on that. There will be a post soon about this particular watch. So let's take our up close look and talk custom watches. So the way this process starts is a potential customer will contact me saying they want a custom watch built. On watchcomplications.com, I have a custom watch request form now. So you could go there, you could fill it out, and it's got a bunch of questions about you know dial and color and logo and, and all that sort of stuff, what kind of movement, case sizes. So a customer will contact me and they all have a vision in their head what they want their watch to look like, and I have to try to get that out of their mind and into a 2D design that I can draw and eventually into a watch. And so in this case, the customer had a couple pictures of other watches, you know, that there were things that they liked about it, things they didn't like about it, but that was a good visual starting point in me understanding what the customer was after. I'll include those inspirational pictures for this watch on the blog post once I get that posted up on the website so you can see kind of where the visual starting point was. So we go through this process of nailing down specifically what the customer wants in terms of what case, what hands, uh, what kind of color in terms of the dial so that I can you know, order ink if I need to. So all kinds of things to get down to exactly what I need to buy. And then I make the purchase. I usually buy two of everything if possible, like a case and hands. I'll always buy a couple just so that if you know something arrives damaged or you know if something happens or if I need to do a repair at some point, I've got the backup materials in my shop. Now I'm going to spend most of my time talking about the dial construction, but I do want to mention about the cases that once we had decided exactly which case, what size we wanted, you may not always be able to find exactly what you're looking for. Obviously, I buy cases from all sorts of distributors and places, and so I don't make them myself. So I'm relying on what's out there. So I'll find something as close as possible that the customer likes, but it still may not be exactly what the customer wants. So for example, this case, which is all brushed now, was actually partially polished. And so I had to take the time to brush it myself. So you can see this is what the case sort of originally looked like. It's got brushed lugs, it's brushed on the sides, but the bezel's polished, the crown's polished, the case back is polished, but this customer wanted the case fully brushed. So one thing you're gonna do if you're gonna do a custom build is try to meet the customer's wishes and requirements. And so I brushed the bezel, for example. It's circular, kind of follows the bezel around. Uh, you can see the crown is also brushed and then the case back it's brushed also. So that's work that I did for this particular build. 
was customizing the case a little bit. And brushing is not too hard. All you need is a little scotch Bright pad and some patience and, you know, care. <laughs> and you can, you can do it pretty easily on your own. Same goes for bracelets. So once we have the case chosen, I can start working on the dial because what case you choose is going to determine the dial diameter. And every watch, the case can take a specific dial diameter. It could be 36 millimeter, 34.5, which I think is what's in this one. It could be 30.2, and it's very specific. Every millimeter, every tenth of a millimeter matters. Things have to be specifically sized so that uh, it all fits together correctly. So I'll start with 3D printing samples. I have a 3D printer. I talk about this in my other videos. Again, I, I, I'm not going to go through every detail that I show in some of my other videos, but I'll print out 3D samples, try different materials. Initially, I was thinking I might use a 3D printed dial in this watch, but decided, you know, after back and forth with the customer that we wanted to use a metal dial. The reason for that is that when I print these 3D samples, I can use them for all sorts of kind of testing. I'll use them for size testing, like, for example, is my CAD drawing correct with where I want this window placed, and I can put it on the movement, make sure this window's in the right spot. I can use this for print testing just to make sure that my ink transfer on my pad printer is working well, that I have things spaced appropriately, that I've got the setup in the right spot so that all the markers are where they need to be. So I can use it for print testing, I can use this for movement testing, I can use it for you know window sizes, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So these 3D samples are great and they're quick for me to print out. It only takes you know 20 minutes or so to print one of these out, but they are crazy thin. Uh, because they are the height of an actual dial, which is small, 0.4 millimeter usually is dial thickness. And you can see the dial feet getting those in the right location. But I print these out. You could print numerals and apply markers and loom directly on a 3D printed dial like this. What you don't want to do is put any sort of comprehensive, you know, clear coat, you know, basically completely coat the thing with some sort of paint because that will warp these over time. It might look fine for a few days, but then this will start to curl up. Let's say you took a, a clear coat of some sort, like a, a matte UV resistant clear coat, like what I put on dials sometimes, or you wanted a polished look, so you put a gloss cover over it. Eventually this will warp because it's just thin plastic basically. So you gotta be careful with that, but you can directly print on this. And so what I expect I'm gonna start doing some is for some custom builds, whether it's ones I sell on Etsy or for clients, sometimes it might want that look. This specific print was actually the first one. It was an accident. I actually love how this looks. I can see myself using it in the same design here and just printing, you know, black or blue or some other color, maybe green, numerals and markers directly on it, which won't hurt the surface any. And anyway, but it was a little bit too thin. And so the way the 3D printer printed it out looks actually kind of really cool with the windows framed uh, like that, both on the edge, the dual time window, the center, and the date. It, it looks cool. So I might actually make a watch and use this style and just print directly on it. So anyway, the 3D samples that I print, I'll try different uh, materials and different types of plastic, different colors, things like that sometimes. But they're basically just to help me through the process in terms of testing. So that's an important aspect of, of my process that I use. After getting the case ready, getting the dial design nailed down back and forth with the customer, getting some 3D samples printed, doing some initial testing, it's time to get the metal dial made. Now, the movement in this is the Ronda 51524D, which is a GMT movement. The more common version of this is the 24H, which has an extra hand. So most GMT watches, you'll see an extra hand that's using to track a second time zone. The 24D has a dual time wheel that you'll have to put some sort of a pointer on the dial so that it can track the time for you for that second time zone. And this is a custom cut window. You're not gonna likely find a pre-made dial that is the diameter you want that has this custom window cut into it. So, and I don't have a CNC machine or a mill or a lathe, you know, some way to custom cut it myself, and so that's something that I had to consider for this particular build. This is the exact movement that the customer wanted. And so I had to figure out a way to get this window on the dial. What I started with was this. So this is a, a dial that's actually finished. And I bought these knowing I was going to basically remove any painting or printing already on them because this is exactly the size I need. And like I said, I, I'll look at lots of distributors. I could get them on eBay. I could get them on Fry. I could, there's lots of places you can get dial blanks, but this was something I was able to find that was the exact diameter, 
had the feet in the right locations. This is meant to go on uh, a Soleta 200 series or the ETA 2800 series, the dial feet locations and where they go on the movement. This is actually intended to go on a mechanical movement. But again, standard size 11 and a half. These Ronda Swiss movements are using fairly standard feet locations. So the dial feet are in the right spots. The center hole is the right diameter to match the movement. The date window is already cut. So this is everything I needed except the custom cut window. And of course, then the printing that the uh, customer wanted on their custom dial. So this was my starting point. I bought six of these. Again, you're always gonna want some redundancy. And I knew that six wouldn't be enough, but I actually have two left over that I didn't use. Um, I kind of bought them for backup and just because, uh, so I would you know, have some spares around. But anyway, I took four of the six and had a custom window cut. Normally you would use some sort of, you know, a mill or lathe or something to cut these sort of things out. But again, I don't have that sort of equipment and hard to find that around where I am. You might think, well, what about getting cut out with a laser? That would be accurate. I do get laser work done for the steel plates for the pad printer. You can learn more about that in the other videos I've got on my Making Custom Dials series. The main reason you can't use most lasers to cut through something like a brass blank is because the wavelength isn't right. It'll essentially reflect the light back and it just won't cut correctly. And so you can't necessarily use a laser to cut through a brass blank. A lot of these things are stamped, you know, in factories and whatnot. But again, I'm not gonna pay for tooling to get something like this stamped. Well, if I can't use light to cut through it and I don't have the tooling and machinery for cutting it out in other sort of more traditional ways, what else could I use? The answer for me was water. Uh, there's a company that's local to me that does like water jet cutting. So I had four, I took four of these dials and I gave them my CAD drawing and they cut the windows for me with a water jet, which is so cool, um, I think. And it was extremely accurate. I did have to do just a little bit of, you know, fine filing and detailing around it a little bit, but I was very happy with the outcome. So these I had cut locally with a water jet. I did that with four of the blanks that I started with. Again, I didn't want to necessarily be cost prohibitive to me. So there is a cost associated with each dial getting cut. I chose to get four of them made. Again, knowing four is not enough, that these were gonna have to basically be redone a lot of times with the printing because a lot of there's a lot of scrap dials when you're going through a custom build process. And so I knew I was gonna be repainting these a lot and, and testing the printing a lot. And but I worked with four dials. You can see this one was used in testing. Two of them, I ended up with the window cut a little bit wider than I wanted. Two of them were cut the right width. And so I used a couple of them for just consistent testing, you know, with the base paint, with uh, getting the alignment correct for the numerals and the, you know, the window frame and all of the markers, etc. So then once I have, you know, a certain number of metal dials, I can use these for testing on the printer. And you can see that's what's happened with this. I use a pad printer. You can go back and look at other videos in the series on how I go about, you know, mixing the ink and and what my pad printer setup looks like. That's all in other videos. I'm not gonna talk about that. You can watch those if you want. You might notice though on the printing on these, you can see these dots. Those I had intentionally printed so that those would serve as center for the loom markers. So I would know where to start applying the loom and was, could be more consistent in the application of the loom, which for this watch, I did by hand. I'll use 3D, this is a 3D printed blank, by the way. Uh, you can see that w when I applied a base coat of paint to it, it kind of warps up a little bit. But I was testing different possibilities for loom, like this is a loom tape with markers cut out, two different types of loom tape. This is actual uh, particle-based loom, which uh, is what's on the final build, but I was testing different shapes, but again, 3D blanks give you a good surface and a good test bed for doing all sorts of testing like can i do a triangle a rectangle you know how do i do circles so practice these are good practice styles for all kinds of things and when i got to sort of the final step i had two dials kind of done one of them i knew was going to be sort of a prototype dial this one is completely done however um it was my first attempt at practicing with the loom application by hand on this so uh, the loom's got some quirks about it but yeah, you know, the dial itself looks nice. You can get a good look at the texture that I was able to achieve. Looks pretty good. 
you can see this is one of the dials that the window was cut a little bit too wide so you can kind of see the wheel there so I knew this wasn't going to be used in the watch but it was still a dial I was taking through the whole process to practice at it to get it right to get alignment of things correct to do things like well you can see I've got the arrow for, loom arrow for the second time zone it's a little bit too big uh, again practicing at the loom application with the markers seeing how much I want to put on it to get what height I want to go in the case um, all that sort of stuff what the logo is going to look like in terms of contrast this is a specific color of green that the customer wanted I might not like it that much you might not like it that much you might love it uh, you know I, and I it's kind of grown on me kind of like it but this is what the customer wanted was this particular color and what's that look like against this dark gray uh, textured background all that kind of stuff it's important to have dials going through the process with you that you know aren't going to be used but then you can easily you know you can handle them you don't have to worry about them or if they get a little bit damaged or they don't look perfect but for example when I want to see well what the hands look like on this uh, watch you know in terms of the lengths or the colors etc you can use a test dial to help you figure that out without damaging or mucking around with the actual final dial you're going to put in the watch so that's the reason why I I'll carry several dials through the process one of the fun problems I had to figure out with this build was getting this dial to move that direction back further so that the stem was at the right height for the movement and the way I solved that was you can see it in there see this little white ring around there on the inside that is a 3d printed ring that is adding about half a millimeter height so it's sitting between the dial and the case but it raises the movement and dial up just enough, pushes it back that direction enough that the stem goes in its center. And of course that takes some testing. I printed out different widths and heights so that this would sit perfectly inside the case around the inner ring uh, of the case and not interfere with the loom on the dial and be at the right height. So that took some testing. Let me show you what that ring looks like. Uh, I have a spare printed out here. This is what it looks like. See it's super thin and tiny only takes a couple minutes to print out on the 3D printer. So and this is also really easy to draw up in uh, AutoCAD. So this is 0.75 millimeter width, and it is uh, half a millimeter height, and then it's the right diameter. So let me show you how this fits. So this sits on top. It's the exact diameter to fit around, like I said, the ring inside of the case and sit between the case and the movement look at that talk about spot on in terms of the specs so i drew up that and it also to be honest i think it adds a really a cool uh, effect to the dial one it gives it a little bit more depth but it also connects all of the markers in a nice way so they're all ringed by that 3d printed spacer ring that's again custom made for this watch. Now once I did all the printing, then I will finish it off by putting on sort of a UV resistant clear coat. And this customer wanted a matte surface. And you can see that it's got that. It's not as textured as you might think or might appear on the video, at least to the eye. But I'll put on several layers of clear coat usually to seal up the paint. Again, it's UV resistant, so it'll help that color last even longer and seals up the logo if it's applied, loom, all that stuff. What the clear coat will also help with is sort of evening out all of the textures and things and give the dial a nice even look in terms of the surface. If there are any like little weird things with the base color, the paint, the printing, etc. So that's what the dial kind of looks like when it's not in the watch, when it's not in the case. I do have another one of these. I guess I forgot to, I was going to show you this. This is the other dial that has the window, the arc window cut the right width. And what I've done with it, whether it's going to be for myself or maybe another customer that wants this watch, I haven't put the loom on this one yet, but this is one of the final products. Again, the window is the right width, is I put my applied logo on it instead of a printed logo. So this is going to look great in a watch eventually too. I didn't put any loom on it yet because maybe another customer will want this and they want a different color of loom. So, or they might want different markers altogether. So this dial is ready to be finished and used, but you can see I haven't put 
a final clear coat on this. So let me show you the texture difference between these two. So you can see what that clear coat is going to do is it's going to, one, even out the texture. It gives it a nice matte finish and surface, but it is also going to lighten up the color just a little bit. It's a little bit lighter gray now on this finished product than through the process. And you don't discover that sort of thing until you get there. That's why it's always good to have the test dial. So this one will eventually look more like this, but um, it still has you know markers or loom to be applied and hasn't been clear coated yet. I also like the steel logo on here too. Uh, but that's you know that's a good color too. Yeah. So then we have the finished product. I put it on this strap. The customer says they have a, a NATO strap for it. I like it on this. It's 22 millimeter sort of brown strap. You can see the, the hands there. You can see the loom is a little bit more sharp in terms of the sizes of the triangles and the edges being crisper. Again, doing some testing and playing around a little bit. And then when you get to the final dial, you know, taking a little bit more time and care. So on and so forth. You can see there's this spacer ring in there. Now, this is not just a 24-hour wheel that coincides with the regular timekeeping. This can be set independently. It is its own time zone, even though I have them set to the, to the same right now. Um, yeah, so I've shown you the back already. Brushed all the way around. And I'm calling this dual time. And dual as in D-U-E-L, you know, like fighting dual. Um, play on words. Dual time. Now it's quite bright out today, but I wanted to at least give you a hint at the loom. There will be pictures of this in the dark proper on the website when I post, you know, the information about it on the website. You can see it's quite uh, good, sharp. It's a nice Swiss loom. But at least wanted to give you like a teaser at the collar. It's a nice bright green collar. I like having that little T2 marker there. It's cool, nice touch, but this at least give you an idea of what this thing looks like when it's in the dark. Again, really good pictures of that coming on the site, but I thought I'd give you at least a teaser there. And when a watch like this is done, it ends up being partially the vision of the customer and partially mine, um, because they'll say kind of what they want something to look like, and then I'll you know be, put my interpretation on that. But this, you know, is a lot of back and forth. But at the end of the day, is it's mainly what the customer wanted, you know, in terms of the loom color, locations, the shapes, the white printing versus, let's say, some other color wanting this specific shade of green for the logo printing, as opposed to, let's say, like the silver applied marker. This is a design based on what the customer has requested, which is what I built because they're the one paying for it. But I, I actually really like this uh, finished product. And again, it's a watch, so it's not going to be to everyone's taste, but um, it's what the customer wants, what the customer likes, and happy to deliver this sort of a product. So yeah, my nano brand name is 106. You can read about that on watchcomplications.com. And this is uh, you know something I thought would be fun to do is to show you my latest finished product for a customer. And look forward to doing more, maybe for that customer in the future. This person just wanted one watch. So this is going to be their one and only watch. And hopefully I'll, I'll be able to do more work with that customer in the future, whether it's servicing this or maybe another watch in the future, but looking forward to the next custom build as well. As always, thanks for joining me here at Watch Complications. I really appreciate uh, people watching my videos and my subscribers sharing things out, making comments. Uh, it's, it's really great to see uh, feedback and people enjoying the content. Now this particular watch may not be your style, but I hope you got something out of seeing the design, the process, and like I said, there'll be a lot more on the webpage, watchcomplications.com, about this build. Don't forget my low-cost watches, Chronograph Edition is coming up. That's going to be great. So subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram at watch underscore complications. If you want updates, ring the bell. And hey, if at any point you feel like you want a custom watch built for either you or someone you know, just mosey on over to the website, watchcomplications.com. I have a custom watch request form, and we can communicate about it. So there's always that possibility as well. Thanks again for watching, everyone. I'm Brian, and I'll talk to you soon.